Anyone who's followed my channel knows that it's about busting scientific myths that pervade the media, often repeated by other media users and even politicians. Well, it's right there in the channel description. It's even more dangerous when the people who believe all this junk science are not just politicians, but heads of state with the power to base their policy decisions on that misinformation. Unfortunately, most of the examples I've given in my videos have been either politicians in the legislature or the heads of government far, far away. So when the president of Zambia believes internet myths that GMOs are poisonous, or when the president of South Africa refused to give treatment to AIDS sufferers because he believed internet myths that HIV doesn't cause AIDS, these weren't issues that affect most of my subscribers. That's why, when the coronavirus pandemic began and the misinformation was believed by the president of a country most of my subscribers come from, and whose decisions would affect them personally, I thought, here's the perfect opportunity to make my point. This is the finest example of what can happen when not just any politician, but the head of government in your own country trust the misinformation he sees on the internet or cable TV ahead of real science. Do you get it now? Unfortunately, I underestimated just how touchy some people are in the United States about their president. As soon as I mentioned the word Trump, it opened a battle between those who attacked Trump for a host of things completely unrelated to science and those who defended him for reasons completely unrelated to the science. Guys, calm down, get a grip. Interestingly, few of the president's supporters denied that he'd got the science wrong. Apparently, that wasn't the point. Some thought it was just plain wrong to correct scientific misinformation coming from politicians. We should be helping people to trust the administration. And many people got science, the world of facts, confused with politics, which is the world of opinions. So let me briefly explain. These are all scientific conclusions regarding the pandemic. So, if the leader of the world's most powerful democracy misrepresents these conclusions because of something he read on the internet or heard on cable TV, then it's important to correct that and let people know what the science says, especially during a pandemic. Since I'm correcting a politician rather than a media pundit, a few people thought that meant it's political analysis or political science. No, a misrepresentation of science is a science issue, regardless of who's making it or what the motivation. Just so that some people do understand the difference, here are the issues that fall under the heading of political science or political analysis, which are things I don't cover. So, for example, the effectiveness of lockdown on slowing the spread of a virus, that's a scientific conclusion based on measurements and calculation, which I've covered whether or not to impose lockdowns and how severe the restrictions should be, that's a political decision that I don't cover. But it has to be based on a proper understanding of the science so that politicians know the life or death consequences of their actions. Likewise, other topics, like whether restrictions are racist, pandering to China, opposing the stimulus bill, intelligence committee members who sold all their stock, these are all political issues that I don't cover on my channel. Whether or not people should go to Chinatown, or whether you believe it should have been locked down while the rest of the United States remained open, that's also a matter of opinion and a political decision. So look, I greatly appreciate these suggestions that I should turn my channel into just another opinionated political talking shop simply to avoid confronting a problem you don't want to hear. So here's a better idea. Why not simply accept that a politician you admire got the science wrong? I'm pleased to say that several subscribers do understand the importance of correcting these errors, whether the politician's on the left or on the right. So to those who still don't get it, Please use the pause button, read the comments, and see how it's done. It doesn't mean the politician or the pundit or the musician you like and support is wrong on everything else, or that you should stop admiring them for whatever reason you admire them. It just means they gave wrong information on some aspect of science, and political, ideological, or religious affiliation doesn't matter. And I have no idea where Nicki Minaj and her cousin's friend's testicles stand on politics. It really doesn't matter. 
Scientific claptrap is scientific claptrap. There were all kinds of stuff-ups and bad government decisions made during the pandemic. That's politics. What concerns me is when the stuff-ups and bad government decisions result from government leaders misunderstanding or ignoring science. We've seen it happen to other people from a distance, but last year it started happening much closer to home. So, when I made this video at the start of my COVID series, I was hopeful people would get it now. But it seems the opposite has happened. We've jumped from a conspiracy theory that the virus was no worse than the flu to a conspiracy theory that, OK, it's worse than the flu, but the mounting death toll is due to something else, to conspiracy theories that, OK, the death toll may be due to COVID-19, but 99% of people who get COVID are just fine and so on through a number of fallacies. So, three quarters of a million deaths later in the United States and billions of dollars lost in productivity, they still don't get it. There are parallels here with climate change, and that's hardly surprising. Notice any similarity? First, there was the theory that scientists were conspiring to fake temperature records. When these phony graphs were exposed, the theory became, OK, temperatures are rising, but the real cause is the sun. When they finally grasped that solar irradiance was falling, the conspiracy theory became changed to, OK, that means we're entering a mini ice age. When we didn't enter a mini ice age, but the planet kept warming, the theory changed to, OK, it's probably carbon dioxide after all, but warmer weather will be good. And carbon dioxide is plant food. Life will be wonderful. Now, with heat waves in the Arctic region, sea ice shrinking, ice caps melting, glaciers all over the world retreating, coral reefs dying, wildfires, hurricanes, floods and droughts all growing more intense, and the futuristic scenes that scientists have been warning about for decades happening for real on the evening news, I have to ask these people again, do you get it now? And if not, what does it take for people to wake up to reality and stop believing blogs, videos and TV pundits spreading baseless conspiracy theories? After all, science is by no means perfect, but it does have a pretty good track record in getting things right. Well, I think the pandemic has finally shown us what it takes. What percentage would you think have been vaccinated? Oh, probably less than 1% at any given time. And you don't think you have a social responsibility to encourage them to go and get vaccinated? We do not. Our job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach faith. Have you been vaccinated? No, sir, I have not. And um, will you get vaccinated? No, sir, I won't. Why? Because I don't trust it and I don't know what's in them. I was strongly against getting the vaccine just because we're a strong conservative family. Hmm. I'm more of a libertarian. He had heard that the people that were spreading the virus were people that had already had the vaccine and that, that they were carriers. She was telling me not to get vaccinated. I think it was from misinformation. I think it was from uh, falling into negative social media and uh, bloggers. I suppose you think I should be saying, told you so and serves you right. No, I feel so sorry for these people who are no doubt decent and honest, who have families, but who were fed a diet of misinformation and believed it. It does, however, answer the question, do you get it now? Because here the answer is yes, most of these people finally do get it. As they were innovating her, um, and they'd given her the sedation and the paralytic, um, which is standard, um, her heart just let go. The next day I went and got my vaccination. I made a terrible mistake. Never should have done it. Should have taken the vaccine. Uh, but that little boy out there is a reason to have a vaccine. And ironically, some of those pundits who spread the misinformation they were listening to also contracted COVID-19 and died because they were poisoned by the same diet of their own bullshit. Dick Farrell, a talk radio pundit who urged people not to get vaccinated. He contracted COVID-19 and died. Scott Apley, a Republican Party official who discouraged many people from getting vaccinated, also contracted COVID-19 and died. And the man who thought the vaccine was unnecessary and recorded this parody song. Phil 
Paul Valentine contracted COVID-19 and all too late wished he'd got the vaccine and urged others to do the same. He also died. It's a sad, pointless and unnecessary waste of life. It's as if we're all falling out of an aeroplane, but some people refuse to release their parachutes because they read that air resistance is a myth and that acceleration due to gravity is exaggerated. Prayers don't work. Vaccines do. So yes, for all the denials and so-called scepticism and ignorance and misinformation that pervades the internet, people do finally get it, but only when it affects them personally, and when it's far too late.